and welcome back. I just came home from picking my son up from school and thought I would go ahead and come back on here and post another make another video for today. I have to tell you all what happened to me last week. <laughs> last week started off with a bang. First thing Monday morning. Give you a little backstory. My son goes to charter school. So he goes to school, physical school, only on Mondays from 7.30 in the morning until 11.30 in the morning. Just one day a week. And um, my son is on the autism spectrum disorder. So he does, and he is also ADHD. So he does have medications that he has to take in the morning as well as bedtime. Now I mind you, he is 15 years old. I do monitor his medications. He has them in, you know, select spots. Um, I was handing them to him directly, making sure that he had taken them and then the right ones. But both his psychologist and his pediatrician have said that he needs to be sure to start taking his medications himself. Because at some point in time, I'm not always going to be here. At some point, I, you know, I may have to have an appointment that I have to go to that he's going to be required to get himself ready for school, be ready, and somebody else might be picking, you know, coming and picking him up and taking him to school. Um, he's been medicated for a long time, so this, he knows the routine. So anyhow, last, um, Monday, um, he wakes me up and tells me his jeans are still damp from the night before, because another squirrely moment, like, uh, Sherry would say, he's 50, he's a 15 year old growing boy. So when I do his laundry, it seems like every two months I'm having to buy him new jeans. He, either new jeans or new sweatpants. He's growing out of clothes faster than I can supply him with clothes. So I don't dry his jeans or sweatpants in the dryer. I hang them to dry <clears throat> or leave them flat to dry. So back to Monday. He uh, wakes me up Monday morning, tells me his jeans are still damp. So I told him to go ahead, throw them in the dryer for just a few minutes, you know, about 10, 15 minutes, and then they would be completely dry. Now, it was 5.22 in the morning when he wakes me up. I got up at, it was about 6. I wake up, I come down, I get my coffee, I get myself in the works of waking up. And we generally leave here about 7 o'clock to get him to school because they don't, since it is one day a week, and for those times, they don't bus him. So I drive him to school in the morning, and then I pick him up at 11.30. <clears throat> Excuse me. So anyhow, it's like a quarter till, se or a quarter till 7. No, it was 6.30 when he said, I got to go up and take my medicine. I forgot to take it. I said, well, go up, take your medicine. He comes downstairs. He's getting all of his stuff together. And he says, I don't want to go to school. And I said, son, you go to school one physical day a week. The rest of the time you do your classes at home on the computer. You need to be in school for that one day a week. If he misses that one day, they count that as five days missed. Now, he can make up that day if he does it in that week, within that week. So Tuesday, they have classes Monday, Tuesday, Thursdays, and Fridays. Wednesdays is just for labs. So he could make the day up, but when he has to do that, especially for nonsense, it really inconveniences me and my week. And it's not like I have a lot to do. I mean, I am a stay-at-home mom, but you know, 
I plan for Mondays to get up that early only one day of the week. Now, I'm not saying I don't get up early that early other days of the week, but Monday is the only day I plan on getting up that early. The other days that happen to get up that early, I'm definitely not getting up by choice. When I'm waking, having to wake up somewhere between 5.30 and 6 o'clock just to sit at home, yeah, not no, especially considering most of the time I'm not going to bed until between 1 and 3. So back to the story. So <clears throat> I tell him, you know, you're going to school. He tells me at 10 minutes till 7, Mom, I think I took my bedtime medicine. I'm like, really? Really? You think you took your bedtime medicine? Yes. I'm feeling really tired. Now, he can take his bedtime medicine at 8 o'clock at night, and he's still awake at 10 or 11. We had just been to his doctor's the week before, and he's telling his doctor that he doesn't think his bedtime medicine's working as effectively as it should, or as it used to, since he's been on this dose for quite some time. And the doctor said, well, let's, let's wait a little longer, and we'll either increase it or we'll change you know, your medicine. Now, a week later, because he doesn't want to go to school, he tries to tell me that He's taking his bedtime medicine in the morning, and within 20 minutes of taking it, he is not able to keep his eyes open, and he feels really weird. I said, you're going to school. I said, get in the car. You're going to school. And you're staying, so don't call for me to pick you up. I drop him off. <clears throat> I came home. I was home all of 30 minutes. And the phone rings, and it is the first aid office telling me that my son is in the office. He took his wrong medicine, and he's really tired, and he can't stay awake. And I let the health or the first the person that called me from the first aid office know we had just had this conversation less than an hour beforehand and that he was going to school. He was just fine. There was no reason other than that he just didn't want to go. There was no reason that he couldn't go to school. Get through his four hours and come home. I got on the phone with they asked me if I wanted to speak with him. I said yes. I got on the phone. I told him he was staying there to get into the class, get his work done, and that was that. At Quarter till 10, I get another phone call from the school. This time he's in the health office. He is lethargic, or almost lethargic, the way they described. He just can't keep his eyes open. He's just really tired. And, you know, he has to, I have to pick him up. And I told him, I said, this is my son's M.O., this is why he is actually going to charter school and not Monday through Friday in regular school because he tends to be very manipulative and really, really easily, he's, easily, he's able to fake really good. I mean, he could be a Broadway performer. He is that good and very manipulative. So I said, you know, he was missing dangerous amount of days of school that was going to affect him in even being able to pass in previous years. Um, he, it's either he's missing school or he's going in late because of something or another, or I have to pick him up early <clears throat> for something or another. He was already missing enough days, you know, half days of school because of doctor's appointments because they could not get him in. <clears throat> after he would get out of school and the morning appointments he's you know the office doesn't open until nine o'clock in the morning so he was missing school for that so I thought the heck with this we're gonna try the charter school that way it will help with the lack of attendance I said so you know this 
this is what he does. And they said, well, I need, you have to come and get him. And they said, why? You're just going to come home? And as soon as he gets home, he's going to feel just fine. And he's going to want to play video games. And he's going to want to, you know, do this. He's going to want to do that. And this, I, I mean, I know him. If anybody knows this child, it's me. They're just now halfway through the school year starting to experience my son's antics. And I said, so no, I'm not coming to get him. He has an hour and a half left. He can finish that time. And then when he comes home, since he's so tired, he can just lay down and go to sleep. But I said he will not be playing video games or doing anything he wants to do because if you can't be in school, you can't do anything else. And she said, no, you have to come and get him. If you do not come and get him, we will call the superintendent of, of the county schools and you they will demand you to come and get him. Because it is a safety concern. And so I said, it's no safety concern. He, this is, you know, if he took his nighttime medicine, which I highly doubt he did because he takes it every night and he doesn't act like this. This is just him faking it. Well, whether that's true or not, you have to come again. So needless to say, I was not happy when I showed up at that school with him or to pick him up. And I wanted to speak to his school counselor. They did get him because I wanted him in the office with the counselor while we discussed this. So he was fully aware that I was letting this counselor know his games. So they go and get him out of class. We go to the counselor's office. We sit down. We talk. And she herself did not believe that he accidentally took his bedtime medicine. She said if he actually did take it, she felt that it was deliberate just so he didn't have to go to school. And, um, <clears throat> yeah. And we do have pill minders, the little things to put the pills in. So, you know, he knows what to take, when, you know, when to take it. The thing is, is he, we were filling those up and he was still, when he would take his medicine, he would take, say it was a Monday. Instead of taking Mondays, he would take Wednesdays. And then later on, he would say, I don't remember if I took my medicine or not. And then he would go back and look and see that it was there. But Wednesdays was missing. And he couldn't, or there would be like two days missing. Say Wednesday and Thursday was missing, but Monday was there. So now... He's not actually sure if he forgot to take his medicine or if he took the wrong day. And I tell him, they put the day of the week on there for a reason. That way, if your medicine is still there, if you have a full thing, you know, I did not take my medicine today, so you take it. Now, if there's two empty spots and still the day that we're on, you can't take it. Because if you did take your medicine, you can't double up. So anyway, I pick him up. We're on our way home. We were 10 minutes from home when all of a sudden, and I mind you, it's all, his school's only six miles away. But with traffic, it takes about a half hour. Because I live in Las Vegas, there's always traffic. But we're less than 10 minutes from home, or roughly 10 minutes from home. And he says, oh, I'm starting to feel better. I, I'm not so tired. Y'all... I was about ready to, I was going to wreck my car. <laughs> the look, I mean, I swung my neck around and looked at him. And I knew this was going to happen. This is what happens every time. So, yeah, that was my Monday. You know, when one day, the first, the beginning of the week starts and it starts off bad, it kind of seems to tumbleweed for the entire rest of the week. It just, it throws you off. That one morning just totally threw me off for the entire week. I ended up having, you know, we had a doctor's appointment last week. Um, 
I had some other appointments. I had planned to go live on third on Tuesday, which is my scheduled day for going live. Um, tried to you know do that and was trying to just do some um, videos before publishing it. And my internet, yeah, it just my internet would not cooperate. I had two attempts, and people, you know, were saying that they couldn't hear me, or I was getting the hamster wheel. And after two attempts, I thought, forget about it. I'll just go ahead and record a whip and chat and post that. Well, every interruption then that took place affected me being able to do that. So that's why there was no whip and chat last week. Friday morning comes. Now, let me go back again. Sorry. When we were leaving the school on Monday, his teacher, he, he has all regular classes. I mean, he's he's taking all regular classes. He doesn't have any um, classes that are like special needs classes or anything like that. He, he takes all your regular classes just like somebody takes that doesn't have, you know, the, the difficulties that he has. So, you know, he takes freshman um, pre-algebra or freshman algebra. He takes freshman English. He takes freshman sophomore studies. Regular classes across the board. But he does have an IEP that gives him some assistance in the specific areas that he struggles with, which is math. Um, he has a problem with math, and then he just has flat-out organization skills. And I'm not going to say that his organization issues has anything to do with his autism because, well, I know a lot of people that don't have autism or anything debilitating or that uh, um, interferes with their learning, and they have organization issues. So I'm, I'm not going to let him use that as his excuse to be disorganized. But the, um, the um, teacher that helps him, the special ed teacher is actually what he is, that helps him with his math, he calls me, and I'm still in a parking lot at the school, and he calls me and said that um, he wanted to have a talk with me and wanted to know when we could um, meet up. And I said, well, I'm still here at the school. I said, I have Stephen, my son, in the car. Um, I said, if, you know, I can come in and we can talk. And he said, no, he said, I can, I'll go ahead and come out and talk to you. And I said, well, I can come in. And he said, no, he said, I want to get, I want to get out here and get, get some fresh air. I said, okay, cool. So he comes out and we talk and, you know, he rants and raves about, you know, wonder, what a wonderful son they have, what a good what kid he is, you know, all those things. And, yeah, that really made me feel good. You know, it's always nice when somebody tells you that you, you've got a good kid or a polite kid, you know. It makes you think that you're doing something right. You know, because there's, there's some days where you're just lucky, you're just surprised that you've been able to, you know, keep your child alive much less instill any type of respect, values, um, uh, being polite, you know, all those things that we, we try to put in, you know, instill in our children that we don't always know if they're listening or if they react properly. So hearing that, it, it made me feel good. Um, he proceeds in telling me that, you know, we're going to go ahead and make up his day on Friday so he can um, receive full credit and not have any absentees. Um, so I was supposed to, initially I was supposed to bring him in at 7.30 on Friday. He told me, don't bring him in at 7.30 on Friday. He said, they're just doing the CRT state testing. He does not need to do that. He's already sat through it and done it once. If he goes into the classroom on Friday, he's going to have to sit and go through it again. He said, so when you bring him in on Friday, bring him in at 9.00 and have him go into the computer lab and I will meet him in there and they will sit down and you know go do his assignments and help him wherever he needs help okay perfect we're golden we've got a plan as long as we follow the plan nothing can go wrong right wrong because I show up with my son Friday morning at 830 
and <clears throat> they tell me he can't come into class when he went up to the front office, you know, went in the front office to get his pass to get to class. He can't go to class. Well, I had stayed in the car to make sure everything went well before I, before I took off. And it was a good thing that I did because he comes out and tells me, Mom, I can't come to class. You need to come in and talk to them. They want to talk to you. I said, why? I'm in my pajamas. Literally. Y'all, I'm like Mrs. Coffee. I don't like pants. I don't like pants. I haven't liked pants in, well, years. I have four children. I was pregnant four times. I lived in sweatpants and stretch pants and leggings and shorts during those pregnancies. When it was time to have to wear jeans afterwards, they were not comfortable. No, don't like jeans. If I have to wear them for, if I have to wear them, I wear them if I have to. But for the most part, no. And if I'm wearing jeans when I come home, they're already unbuttoned, unzipped, and working their way off me as I'm running up the steps to put sweatpants on or something more comfortable. So yeah, don't don't like to get, don't do jeans. And when I plan on just dropping him off, I don't feel the need to. So I was in full on pajama mode. I'm talking flannel sweatpants or flannel pajama pants, fuzzy socks, fuzzy slippers. Yes. Yes. I'm that mom. I will wear my slippers to drive and take my son to school. I will put my slippers on if I need to run and just grab a gallon of milk from the store. That's me. My head, I did take a brush through my hair. It doesn't, it, it didn't look like I did. Trust me, it did not look like I did. I looked like I had just crawled out of the bed from a 12 year sleep. But I had to go in the school looking like that. Now, I'm not happy. I go in, ask what's going on. They tell me, yeah, he was supposed to be here at 7.30 and it's 8.30. So he's not going to get full credit today or get for his full four hours. So he's going to be considered absent for the entire week. That's five days absence. And I said, no. Mm -mm. I said, Mr. Moses, who is, was his teacher, told me to tell, to have him come in at nine o'clock and he would sit with him and help him get through what he needed to get through. There was no need for him to be here at 7.30 and CRT test again since he had already taken the test and he would sit there for an hour and a half waiting for him to show up anyway. So he just said to have him come in and do the, the lab at nine o'clock. And they said, well, that's not how it works. And I said, well, that's not my problem. <clears throat> that's your problem and I'm doing what a teacher told me to do so you gotta take that up with him but my son will be considered present for his full four hours today as well as the two hours that he spent already on Monday and that's how that's gonna go and she said well you know, normally we wouldn't allow this, but I'm going to go ahead and give, you know, this is the only time, you know, we're not going to do this again. And then we'll go ahead and take it up with the teacher. And I'm thinking, oh, lovely. And the teacher's trying to, you know, do something nice and help him out. And now he's going to get it. But rather him get into trouble than my son be penalized for what that teacher told him to do. So he, uh, they said they've got to find him. They hadn't seen that teacher yet. So me and my son are sitting in the front of the school waiting for him to present us with his presence. And no sooner do I catch that teacher out of the corner of my eye, I see the principal walking right beside him. She wasted no time to grab him up. And he comes, walks out the door, and he's like, I am so sorry. And I was like, what are you sorry for? You know, it's, it's fine. I mean, it's not your fault that they're making such a big deal out of nothing. And he said, you know, you try to do something to help other people that you care about and that you're trying to, to help. And there's always somebody that's got to make it difficult. 
And he was apologetic, and he was apologizing up one side, down the other. He didn't think they would make such a big deal about something since he had already taken these stupid tests that he himself said are not even necessary. They don't grade them. They're not for placement. It's just something that the state of Nevada requires these kids to do. So he said, well, since they're going to make you stay the four hours, you know, what time did you get here? And he said, it was 8.30. And he said, is it going to be a problem picking him up at 12.30? And I said, no, it's not. I mean, it is what it is. So I don't have anything else planned. So, yeah, I can go ahead and pick him up. So, fortunately, that all got taken care of. But, ugh, I... I'm going to tell you, I've been a mom for a long time. He is my youngest of four. My oldest will be 32 this year. This mom is ready for a long overdue vacation. I love my kids. My, I love my kids. I wouldn't deny them or trade them for anything in the world, but I would love for them to get amnesia for just, you know, maybe like an hour or two a day that they forget who I am just for an hour or two that I don't hear mom. I need this mom. I need that mom. I want this mom. I want that mom. Can I have this? Can I have that? No, I I'd like to be a stranger to them because I've taught <clears throat> taught all my kids don't talk to strangers. Yeah, they're adults now for the most part, so um, that, that rule probably wouldn't apply. But I would love that stranger danger to apply one hour or two a day. Just so I, 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 I just need that hour or two of solitude, of peace and quiet, of... Just being able to be me. <clears throat> Sometimes I would do absolutely nothing but stare at the wall in amazement that there was such quiet. Read a book without you know reading the same paragraph two or three times because I've been interrupted. Or watch a movie or a TV show without having to hit pause or rewind because somebody's come in and interrupted me and I didn't get to hear what was said. Um have a hot shower I, you know I would have thought by now at 15 that it wouldn't be like when he was three you know, when he was three I had to watch his every move and I had to take quick showers and couldn't take a nap you know I had to, I had to be on my game at all times because you know he was three and three-year-olds get into things and you know but at 15 and he is yeah yes I I did say autism spectrum disorder, but he is high functioning on that spectrum disorder. So even his, his therapist and his, his doctor is like, yeah, um, he's just lacking the maturity to function to his abilities. He's lazy. And once he has something in his head, like all kids at that age, once you get something in their head, they're set on it. And there's no there's no backing down. They're, they're not going to give in or give up. Chances are, as the parent, you're going to be the one to give in or give up just to save yourself. Um, another thing that happened last week, I swore I should have changed my name, my legal name to the Webster Dictionary because... I am that person that gets the question of, well, what does this word mean? Or how do you spell this? Or, you know, mom, do you know this one? Like, do I look like I have two hard covers and a spine? No. You have a Webster dictionary. I went out and paid money for that. I did not pay for that for it to sit on your desk and make it look like you're trying to be smart. Now, you want to be smart? You want to know all these things? Grab the book. If you can take the time to look things up on how to play this video game or how to play that video game or to buy a video game 
or to download music or such, then you can use that sa those same resources to look up the meaning of a word, how to use the word, or whatever else that it is that you're trying to grasp knowledge of. Now, I'm not saying I'm not going to answer things, but he asks me questions that I literally stops me dead in my tracks, that I wonder to myself, where where did this child come from? Where did this, the thought process come from? Now, they're all appropriate questions, you know. He's not asking anything inappropriate or anything like that. But he's he has interests that are so outside of what n kids his age have, for the most part. Which he's always been that way. He was five years old, and I would put Caillou on for him to watch, and he'd ask if he could watch the news. Or I'd put on Caillou or, you know, Dora the Explorer or something like that. And he'd want to watch National Geographic's Animal Kingdom or Discovery Channel. He's always thought, had a way, way more advanced thought process and interest than, his, than most kids his age. But... The questions he asks me. And he's all into music. He plays guitar. He's teaching himself. He's actually teaching himself by ear how to play guitar because he does not know how to read sheet music. So he will listen to a CD or listen to, um, <coughs> excuse me, the radio, and he will he will actually teach himself to play guitar just by listening to a song. He does know the chords and the frets and all that stuff. He knows that stuff, but which that is like very impressive to me. I mean, I'm really proud that he's he's learning how to he's teaching himself. But he listens to all different types of music. Um, most of it's like classic rock or uh, metal, and you know. When I was a teenager and a young, younger adult, I listened to the same stuff. I, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, um, ACDC, Ozzy, you know, I listened to all those bands then. I don't listen to them now because I don't like their new music. I mean, if it's old stuff that comes on the radio, then yeah, I listen to it. But he'll them say, oh, Metallica had a new song. Did you hear this song? I'm like, no, we didn't. And I was like, oh, you need to hear this. And I was like, I don't like their new style of music, so no. And he's like, oh, you know, it goes like this. Now, he might be teaching himself how to play guitar, but he is tone deaf. When it comes to singing, no. That is something he should never, ever do, is try to sing. Just as I, I'm the same way. Not criticizing him, just being honest. I mean, we're going to be honest. I try to teach my children honesty, so... If I'm going to tell them that they need to be honest, then I've got to be honest with them, too. Not trying to hurt nobody's feelings, just trying to be just trying to be honest. So yeah, we spent a lot of time arguing back and forth with the 55 questions of who's this, what's that. You know, it, it's the 20 questions that you play with your three-year-old of who, when, where, why, but why. Well, because mommy said so, but why? Well, I still get that with my son, you know, and it does, it can vary from, well, you, no Xbox for the day. Why? Because you didn't clean your room. Well, mom, my room's fine. Why do I have to clean it? Because your room is in my house. I can't stand to have a room that's a mess. And I am not that mom that pulls the door shut and lets the mess stay. If I do that, I am teaching him that it is okay to be a slob, and then it is not okay to be a slob. I have already let him know I will never visit him when he moves out. If he wants to see me, he's got to come to my house because I won't be able to walk into his house. There's no way. If he keeps his house in any way that he keeps his bedroom and his bathroom, I've seen outhouses and gas stations 
that are in better shape than his bathroom because he just toothpaste everywhere and soap, you know, we, we use um, the pump soap. There's pump soap dripped all over the counter and toothpaste all over the counter and toothpaste in the sink, you know. And yeah, he is a boy. I know that. Everybody says, oh, he's, be he's just a boy. Well, that's like saying, oh, he's just a kid. How long do you allow a kid to just be a kid before they need to be an adult? They, you know, they need to act like an adult. They need to be responsible for their own actions and take pride in themselves and their rooms or bathrooms or what have you. There's got to be a point because I told him, I am trying to raise you. I have a boy that I'm trying to raise to be a man who will be able to take care of himself, it, you know, not rely on a woman to cook for him and clean for him and, you know, remind him to put deodorant on, and to comb his hair. Um, just like I raised three daughters that I did not want their husbands to have to either live in filth and or a mess or have a maid, or have to eat out every day, or just be happy with a bologna sandwich or a bowl of cereal. No. No. Mm -mm. I, and he's, he needs to be, you know, mom's not always going to be there. As much as I would like to say that I'm going to live forever and I'm always going to be here to have his back. Yeah, that's, that's not reality. And so I'm trying to teach him that now that I'm raising a man to not have to find a woman to be his mother to take care of him. We are given, he has his mom. He doesn't need a woman to become his mom to replace me and follow behind him with a dust rag and a laundry basket and making his meals for him. I do those things now because he's my son and I love him, but he's got to be able to do things for himself. So yeah, that was last week was just a mess. The weekend comes and it's funny, Monday through Friday, I don't see my son 90% of the day. Or, I mean, uh, Monday through Friday, I see him the majority of the day. Excuse me. Coming, asking for this, wanting that, needing this, needing that. Can we go and get this this Xbox card? Or can we get a Steam card? Or can we order this off of Amazon? Can we go out to lunch? You know, this is Monday through Friday. But Saturday and Sunday, I don't... He, he disappears. It's like he is checked out for the entire weekend. The only time he comes down is... At dinner time. And I've gotten to the point where he knows dinner time is pretty much the same time every night. It, it varies by literally minutes. <clears throat> because my husband works 10 hour days. He gets home from work. Oh, sorry. My dog is off to the side here. It's kind of weird. Okay. My husband gets off work at 4 o'clock. He gets home at 4 30, 4 45. He wants to eat dinner between 5 and 5 30 because he's in bed between 8 and 9, so he can get up at 3.30 in the morning. So we have a pretty set schedule as far as what time we eat. My son knows what time we eat. I get tired of yelling at the top of my lungs up the steps to him to get his attention over the headphones and the video games to come down for dinner. So I've told him, there's a clock in there, which he's, over, he's taken over my craft room. That's where he's playing his video games. So... There's a clock in there, you got your phone, you've got your Fitbit on your wrist, you've got three sources of being able to um, find out what time it is. You know what time we be down here for dinner. And even times that I do yell to him and he doesn't come, I'm not walking up them steps. I do that enough throughout the day. I don't want to do it any more than I have to. So if he doesn't come down for dinner, we eat and... He'll come down an hour after work. I mean, literally, we will eat. I will clean up the kitchen. I will come in with my cup of coffee or my hot tea and sit down and start to diamond paint. And he'll come down and say, Mom, 
Why didn't you come and get me for dinner? Are you hungry? Yeah, I'm starving to death. Well, you ain't that hungry, because if you were that hungry, you would have come down an hour ago. <clears throat> now, I feed him. I don't say do without or eat a peanut butter sandwich. No, because when I put everything away, I make him a plate up before I put everything away. And I cover it up, because I know it's inevitable he's going to be back down here, or coming down here, after it's all done. But, I said, on the weekends... The only, the only reason that I know he's here on the weekends is because I hear him upstairs with his headphones on, yelling and carrying on over the video games. I can actually be downstairs, which when I say downstairs, I mean downstairs and the opposite side of the house as to where he is. My husband will be sitting here watching sports, yelling at the TV, at the game. I will have my AirPods in, watching YouTube or Netflix or listening to an audible book. And there are times where I will actually hear my son upstairs yelling about the games over all the noise that's down here and things in my ear making noise. <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh. <clears throat> my husband's like, you get carried away. You need to slow down. This is just a, it's just a stupid video game. And in the same time, I look at him thinking, yeah, you need to calm down, too, because you're just sitting there watching sports. You're just watching a basketball game or a football game. You're yelling at these players to do this or to do that or how they do. They can't hear you. They can't hear you. I can, and I don't want to and don't care about what you're saying. They can't hear you, so they're not going to change how they're playing. And if they're doing everything so wrong, why aren't you there doing it? Now... So, yeah, that's that's what that, that have, that, those are the things that happen in my world. And then last night, Monday, which would be Sunday night, we had a windstorm here in Las Vegas that I it blew my mind. We were having like 60 mile an hour winds with 70 some mile an hour gusts. We're in here watching TV and we're, we have a front room. When you first walk in, we've got the front room and then we have a long walkway that takes us into the kitchen and into our living room. We have an open floor plan towards the back of the house. So in the back of the house, we are sitting here watching TV and I'm diamond painting. And all of a sudden, I hear something that I would have sworn that a truck drove through somebody's house. That's how loud this was. I mean, it scared the hell out of me. And me, and the same time, my son comes running down the steps saying, "It, mom, somebody, the neighbor's light just blew off the, their chandelier light on their on their um." Garage just blew off. I was like, what? And he said, it, no, are you sure? He said, yeah, I heard, I heard something break. So we take off to the front of the house. And as we're trying to open our security door to get out of our house, the wind is pushing it shut. And next thing you know, our blue public... Uh, Republic uh, Garbage Company, there's blue trash cans. We have one for recycle and one for trash. They both go flying from the side of the house where we keep them by the garage across our driveway down towards the street because they were empty. Trash came on Friday. The only thing that was in there was a grocery store bag with some stuff in it. Other than that, we hadn't put any trash or recycle in the cans yet. Oh, there was two milk cartons in the recycle. One milk, one milk carton and one juice carton. <coughs> I was like, yeah, God, see ya. Because <laughs> I'm not going after you. There is no way I am running down the street after the cans or the milk carton and juice carton. They're gone. New life. Hope you enjoy it. Because I could barely stand within the wind. My front door mat... The outside front door mat, it's one of those heavy 
you know, but it was flying across the yard. I go to pick it up and the weight of that with the wind, I sprained or dislocated my middle finger, which is what I gave it when it happened on my left hand. I am trying to walk then towards the wind in the direction of the wind to get back to the house from my front yard getting the rug and the wind is grabbing hold of the rug and it's pulling me backwards. It took both me and my husband to open our security door to get in the house. He grabbed the, got the uh, trash cans and he's trying to wheel those things up the street and into our driveway to put in the garage and these are empty and the wind is pulling them. And you know, he's not a very big guy. He's five, nine, you know, 170. He, he's not a big guy. So he's fighting with the wind and the trash cans. I'm fighting with the security door and the uh, outside mat. The glass or the break that my son heard, we've got the terracotta tiles on the top of our house. The wind actually blew off two terracotta tiles off the top of our house and they hit our driveway and they shattered. And those are the Santa Ana winds. We knew we were going to get winds that was going to cool our temperatures down because it was like 70 degrees yesterday. Yeah, today's high, 49. Those were the winds that cooled us down. I just didn't expect the winds to be that intense. Um... My poor dog couldn't even go outside to go for a walk. I got a little chihuahua. He's just a little guy. I'm not sure if I can... Let me see if I can show you without causing too much shakage. See? That's... Oh, sorry. Nice. Yeah, that's my chihuahua. That's my little guy. Luigi. 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 Hi. How you doing? You taking a bath? Go back to sleep. All right, I'll try and bring you back down here without making you sick. So, um, yeah, he couldn't even go outside for a walk because the wind was so strong that, yeah, I mean, he, he made it out to like the edge of our driveway and that was, that was it. He was done. My son, I had to stand there by the front door and wait for the watch to see them come so I could open the door for my son so the security door didn't go flying out of his hand and rip off the the frame or swing back and hit him or slam them you know slam on them trying to come in so yeah that's that's what's been going on here lots of fun so he's home from school I'm sitting here working on finishing, trying to get the Ice Princess finished up. I have about, I, I have my um, thing sectioned off as you can see here with the, with these squares. And I have this area here, this little bit to finish here. And then I have one, two, three, four, Five, six. I have about eight more sections about this big, and then I'll be finished. And then I have this is part of my slash the stash and whip the whips, the challenge Rachel Ray's got going on to get through 2019 stash before starting any new paintings. So I have several that I've started, and then I have. It's like 12 or 15 that I've already kitted up that I'll be working on throughout the year, as well as several that I don't have any. I don't have any more Harbor Freights that are empty. So I've got to finish these so I can free up some Harbor Freights. So I hope you're all having a wonderful Monday. And getting some work done. And if you have to be out working, I hope that you've had a wonderful day. I'm sure it was hard getting up and going and did want to announce I am not a fan 
of this team, but I did root for them last night. Congratulations to the Kansas City Chiefs and to the coach for now going into the books as the coach with the most wins and his first Super Bowl. I mean, that's fantastic. Patrick Mahomes. You know, I, like I said, I, they're not my team. I am a Pittsburgh Steeler. I bleed black and gold. But I do have favorite players that do play on other teams. I'll give credit where credit's due. I might not like a team because they've either beat my team or I don't like a team because I don't agree with their antics and we won't get into that. But uh, there are players that I really like to watch play. Patrick Mahomes is one of them, especially coming in last year as a rookie or a year before last as a rookie and getting so close last year to Super Bowl and falling short, making it this year. I mean, their, their season didn't start out so hot, but they really made a turnaround and they, they finished off with a bang. So I was really impressed with that last night. Um, so congratulations to the Kansas, Kansas City Chiefs and to all you Kansas City Chief fans. You deserve it. Enjoy it. Hey, I want my Steelers to make it to the Super Bowl and win next year, but if they can't, let's hope that you guys get a repeat. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. <clears throat> um, I've got some stuff that I need to do. I want to go ahead and get this processed and put up for the day and I have a list as long as my leg of Netflix that I need to binge watch. I have a whole bunch of shows that I'm behind on and I have a book that I want to finish on Audible and write a review and post that and then I have a book, a physical book that I want to start reading as well as I'm hoping to get some crocheting in tonight I'm working on a blanket and it's almost 1.30, so my husband will be getting home before too long, and I want to be able to enjoy the time that I have before the evening chaos starts of dinner, packing lunches, and watching him either fall asleep watching sports or yelling at the TV about sports. So... Again, I hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. I am going to try tomorrow between 9 a.m. and 7 a, or 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. Pacific time. That is 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mountain time. 11 a.m. and or no, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., 1 p.m., 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain Time, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central Time, and what is it, 12 to 3 p.m. Pacific Time, I'll get this, that I will be going live tomorrow. If my internet allows it, we are still supposed to have these heavy uh, winds um, over the next 24 to 48 hours, so if I do not go live tomorrow, Due to the winds, um, I'm, I think I might go ahead and do a premiere tonight. So if I'm not able to go live tomorrow, we'll have that. Or I'll just maybe jump back on later on and do a whip and chat to have just in case. But I am hoping to go live tomorrow. So if you like um, my channel, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If not, that's okay. You've got to take the good with the bad. And I'm not going to get all likes on my videos, and I'm okay with that. But if you are so inclined to watch my full video and like the video, I would look. I would appreciate that. If you would please share my videos, that would be fan or my channel, that would be fantastic. And in order to see what else, what other stories and whatever chaos that takes place in the Brown household, please subscribe to my channel. I'm working on getting my schedule a little better. It's, uh, basically, it's all depending on my son and my internet on how well I can follow a schedule. But I am working on it, and I do have things that I want to be showing. Trying to get my giveaway ready. Um, I'm 
going to, I'm trying to find things that I can give away that aren't excessively expensive, but that will be interest. you know, there'll be things that you'll enjoy or that you'll actually be able to use. So just be, uh, be patient with me on that. Uh, if there's anything that you would like me to discuss or talk about on my channel, which talk and discuss is the same thing, isn't it? Yeah. Or show on my channel, please leave that in my comments or you can email me. My email is in my about section as well as my Facebook and my Instagram. And I am going to start um, using my Instagram a little more. I never used it a whole lot, but I'm going to start showing things on there, pictures of my progress, books that I've read, progress on my um, crochet projects, um, and different things like that. So until next time, have a great one, guys. See ya.